on the Sooner Sports Network from Learfield. Live at Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue. This is Sooner Sports Talk, presented by Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, bringing you the best in real Texas barbecue. Sooner Sports Talk is also brought to you by Riverwind Casino, good times, great rewards, and by Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. This is Sooner Sports Talk. Now, here are your hosts, Teddy Lehman and the voice of the Sooners, Toby Rowland. All right, hi, everybody. Welcome to Rudy's. It is a Monday night Sooner Sports Talk. We're going to talk about the game against South Carolina and the upcoming showdown with the Old Miss Rebels. Please help me welcome my co-host for the show. He's on the end. He's the Butkus Award winner, Teddy Lehman, everybody. Appreciate it, T-Row. How are we doing, partner? Fantastic. This guy right here is the head coach of the Oklahoma Sooners. Make him welcome Brent Venables, everybody. Howdy, sir. Good to have you here tonight. Yeah, good, good to be here. Opening segment brought to you by Noble McIntyre, McIntyre Law, the law firm you should turn to for all your personal injury needs. Well, coach, before we get into talk about South Carolina and Ole Miss, obviously the news as the, uh, of the day came yesterday with the announcement of uh, the dismissal of your offensive coordinator, Seth Luttrell. We'll just start there. Can you tell us what, what led to your decision? Well, a lot goes into you know, making those types of changes, and um, there's a. It's over the last several months. There's a body of work that you you look at all of it and evaluate it, and um, um, obviously we haven't played winning football, um, you know, on offense, and uh, so you always look, go back and look at why. And there's certainly, uh, you know, we. We know what some of the issues have been from a, a roster standpoint and the injury standpoint, and those are very real, uh, without question. And uh, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, you look at okay, if we continue to do what we've been doing, you know, you're, there's a good chance we're going to continue to have the same results. And so I think about again and again, and this just goes way back, all the way to the very uh, beginning of, of spring and winter and all that, and through the summer and and then the season itself. And, uh, and I, I, again, I look at everything from, uh, you know, uh, game plan, play design, sequencing, uh, leadership, uh, you know, the details, uh, the little things. And then I look at, you know, what our, our players have been doing. Are they, um, are we straining? Are we showing up, uh, competing at practice? Are we play, competing hard in the game? I'm not, I'm not saying play perfect, you know, uh, you know, do we know what we're doing? All of those things go into it, and at the end of the day, I just felt that, um, you know, I gave it its time, you know, where I didn't feel like there was, I was rushing to judgment, and, uh, and, and everything doesn't fall at the feet of Coach Luttrell either. I, I would be remiss if I didn't say that, and uh, incredibly hard because, you know, so many people are affected. There's a real domino effect, but at the end of the day, I got to do what's best for the players and certainly the program, and, and that's what ultimately led to, you know, the decision. And so it's a, it's a change in leadership, a change in the voice. It's a change in, um, again, game plan. It's a change in a perspective. It's a change in the coaching. It's a change in uh, the sequencing on game day, uh, all of those types of things. And, 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 again, maybe it provides the spark, too. And maybe, you know, I know that we're somewhere in the hundreds uh, in – all the different categories, uh, and it's, you know, completely unacceptable and embarrassing and uh, well below the standard, and it doesn't, you know, reflect, you know, who Oklahoma has been for a really long time. I had a historical lens that I <laughs> I got to look at, and so I know that there's lots of teams around college football, and I don't, you know, if there's 20 of them, I don't know, uh, but there's lots of teams that have similar type issues. You know, you have injuries, maybe you have a young quarterback, uh, you know, maybe you have a new offensive line and you've got some guys banged up there and there's a continuity thing. And then you have several guys on offense that are in their first year, whether they're an older guy or a younger guy. And so I, I look at that, but I, I know that we're not the only ones, but why are we historically not where we need to be? And uh, there's been some improvement. It's been incredibly incremental. You don't sound right by saying that because at the end of the day, the result has been the result, and it's all uh, crap. And, and, and so uh, for me, I've got to um, 
again, look out for, for everybody else. And, and even, you know, it, so if look at, maybe it provides a spark. Maybe it, it creates a little more edge. Um, although I've, I felt like we've had great engagement and great will to invest week in and week out by both the players and the staff. But maybe this provides a little bit of a spark. Um, and again, there will be real change. You know, the things that I just said will be different, even though there's people that are still here on that side of the ball. And you know, the things that I said are very real, the things that can be different and, um, and maybe better. And, and maybe it's whether it's a placebo effect or not, I, I, I do believe if, if we just make some incremental improvement, play to our potential, do the things that the game requires you to do in order to execute and win, number one, take care of the ball. Uh, in our three, three losses, you know, we didn't take care of the ball. And we had opportunities to score when we did turn the ball over and we didn't, we didn't, we didn't punish people. And this week was a great example that uh, when it was one-sided in those turnovers and, and uh, they score and we, we don't, provide those opportunities, it can get out of hand in a hurry. So, um, again, all those things, you know, uh, went into it. And, you know, again, for me and for our, our, our staff, again, I, you know, I've got to do a great job uh, from a leadership standpoint of, uh, you know, calling it exactly like it is. And, uh, and there's got to be accountability. And, and our guys know that. And, you know, there's nobody that was, quote, unquote, surprised by it. Um, you know, it was received, and we move forward. And and so I'm really excited about what I uh, saw. I um, uh, had a team meeting yesterday, and, uh, it, you know, there was a surprise there. You know, these are young guys that are looking for, you know, uh, you know, all right, what do we do next? And so, uh, you know, again, we, we've got to be, again, confident and aggressive and sure of what we're doing and, um, and our guys, you know, the staff-wise have, have done a great job, you know, in just a very short amount of time, uh, responded the right way, and, and obviously we've uh, promoted both Kevin Johns and uh, Joe John. Uh, uh, you know, Kevin, when he got here, uh, was hired uh, later in the winter, uh, early spring, uh, as, an, as an analyst. Coaches, off-the-field coaches, were not allowed to coach. So he was doing... Um, he was doing, looking at advanced scouting and not really in the, in the nuts and the bolts of the X's and the O's and learning all the new language and things, although he'll pick up some things, but that wasn't his forte. He wasn't breaking down games and having to prepare stuff day to day for the coaches. He's more of an advanced scout guy. And, and, and so our, our guys in-house were... Uh, you know, the guys that can coach, GAs and things like that, they're, they're in more of the nuts and the bolts uh, as far as the X's and the O's and the verbiage and things like that. And um, we know, again, I think it's been uh, well documented what, um, you know, Kevin's resume, uh, what his resume is and the success that he's had uh, and the, the exposure that he's had at, at several places, whether that was at, at Texas Tech or it was at Indiana for several years where they, they broke 55-plus Big Ten records and led the Big Ten in scoring uh, when he was the OC and quarterback's coach, uh, I think maybe 16, 17. And uh, the development piece that's really there, he understands everywhere. He's had to maybe do more with less. I love that about coaching, you know, when you see people have success at places where maybe they don't always have the best resources, but you're able to maximize guys and you're essentially putting guys in position to be successful. And that was, again, behind this decision that we got to maybe do, again, whatever that looks like, a better job of putting our guys in position to be successful. And everybody, there's always a collaboration. Um, but, you know, what we have figured out what doesn't work. I know that. Uh, you know, there's certain things that haven't worked. Um, and so uh, you push those to the side and, and try to lean in some expertise. Uh, and again, Kevin has that experience at again, several places, a very uh, good uh, track record at, at Memphis as well and at Duke. Uh, you know, again, places where, again, you got to really uh, get after it and work and recruit and develop and uh, really high level success offensively, super bright. Uh, and he and I deal, uh, we, we work together a lot, have, um, because he's, he helps me in a lot of different spaces, uh, special teams and um, 
a defense. Uh, just I, I work through him. I'm, I got different ideas and things that I know are hard on a defense, and I study the other opponent's defense, and I know these are things that, that um, work and can expose them. And if they fit, you know, our game plan, then he, he puts things together uh, in a presentation to, uh, to, the, to the staff, and then they put, pick and choose what, you know, they like out of that that fits this week. But uh, he and Joe John will work together, and uh, with again with the rest of the staff, everybody has a a, a, a role, and uh, but those will be the kind of the two voices um, putting stuff together, and then and then uh, uh, Joe John, you know, will will call it on game day. The that last thing you said there, I would assume you had a choice between those two guys. I mean, you could have gone with Kevin Johns as the play caller. Yeah. Why Joe John? Well, again, just what I said you know, for the first. They did not pass that rule until yeah. fall camp where every these other off the field people can actually coach and and because of all this time where he, he hasn't been um, intimately involved with the offense the the x's and the o's the verbiage all the the depth of that he's been more uh, organizational advanced scouting um, he's been another. Uh, head coach of the scout teams, uh, helping me uh, that way, both in uh, the defensive scout team and also, also the special teams uh, scout teams because he's, he's a leader. And so I put him in some of those roles that need really good leadership so you get the right looks and stuff like that. And so, you know, here we are. You get, I mean, you got a week to make sure that you have all your verbiage down and things like that. It's, it's just a lot. Yeah. It's not really fair to put him in that position, but he'll, he'll have a lot of influence and. He, he was like a, a pig in the mud today uh, with the quarterbacks. He'll be a great asset for those guys. Uh, Jack Luttrell um, was actually who, who has been uh, a coach, coach Seth Luttrell's uh, quarterback assistant. You know, uh, Jack was at uh, Missouri um, and then was at Tennessee with uh, Hype and was at Missouri with Hype and, and then also and played quarterback and then was at Memphis and was the GA for Kevin Johns. Okay. Pretty, yeah. you know, so I, circle. I brought them in, in the meeting yesterday and said, okay, well, you're going to be his GA again, essentially. And, um, and Kevin will be, you know, in charge. And, but it was really good today to watch all of those dynamics. And he'll be a great uh, vessel for those quarterbacks to, to get another lens and another view of things. And he wouldn't have to figure it out. You know, today he was he was uh, on point. It was really good. Quarterback himself back in his playing yeah. days, Kevin Johns. Yeah, back played at Dayton. 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 Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll take a break. We'll unleash Teddy with questions when we come back. We're at Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue with Brent Venable. Stay with us. Sooner Sports Talk is brought to you by Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, bringing you the best in real Texas barbecue. Walden Cleaners and Laundry, where the difference is quality. Riverwind Casino. Good times, great rewards. Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Bob Moore Ford is proud to honor service members through the Patriot of the Game. Log on to Soonersports.com slash kids for information about joining the Sooner Junior Kids Club presented by og and &E. And brought to you in part by Orthodontics Exclusively, Mathis Home, and Devon Energy. Welcome back, everybody, to Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue. We're with Brent Venables tonight. Sooners getting set for Ole Miss Saturday morning down in Oxford. Teddy, you got a question for Coach? Well, uh, I guess let's get into the game from Saturday, South Carolina. Um, Obviously got off to a really bad start. Yeah. I mean, um, take us through what, what you, you know, what you guys saw out there. Yeah, well, there's, again, we didn't, obviously the first play of the game, we've got a, a shot where we got a, a post uh, over route and the, in the first three yards of the, of the, the post, we were behind the defense. And uh, so that part of it was really good. And, uh, but our protection uh, broke down and we got a, we got a, a, a tough matchup and don't do a good job just to get a little bit of help don't and uh took the quarterback off the spot and then he throws it a, a little you know underneath and behind the guy and receiver got a strain and come back for the ball a little better and they they step in underneath it you know uh and then uh obviously we we fumbled the ball um they had a little add-on it wasn't a blitz but they, they they're playing man free and we got a, a boot 
and uh, and uh, so they uh, they added on quickly, and and we don't have control of the ball, and uh, they scoop score that one, and then and then again another uh, uh, another interception where we're trying to throw the ball back uh, deep across uh, you know the field, and and don't have a great throw, and and uh, maybe a little bit hurried. I don't. You know, just inaccurate, and in the they they do a good job of picking it off. And, uh, and again, we we got to do a better job, at, you know, in lots of places, you know, but protection and decision making, and uh, again, just ball security. Uh, generally speaking, we got also just a simple thing like let's let's let the defense line back up. So we uh, didn't do a good job. We we got to keep them from staying on the sideline uh, as well. But right out the gate, it's twenty-one nothing, and. Uh, obviously, on the on the very first one, they the defense goes out. Uh, we did a poor job, um, you know, setting the edge on the one they scored. Uh, we, and just a small thing where you put your outside hand on the defend or on the on the blocker, you can't do that. You know, it can't if if, if it touches his shoulder, you can't touch him for long. You got to you know two to one and you know lock a guy out. And we didn't do that. They circled the defense. So things you can get away with against against the scouts. At practice, it's bad habit, and uh, they circled us there. And everybody was obviously, um, you know, it's devastating. You know, uh, that's certainly not what you plan for. And it's a team that were really evenly matched. You know, two really good defenses, two offenses that have a lot of the same issues. Um, they had a lot more issues uh, with ball security than we had. Um, and uh, uh, but not not on Saturday. And that's the the tale of the game. But uh, Jackson came in, and, uh, and again, at the end of the day, we, we didn't do what we needed to do to give ourselves a chance to uh, to win. Um, but it, and he had 11 play, 8 play, 10 play, 12 play drives, uh, 7 play. I think the second drive he was in, a 7 play, it didn't go a long ways. But uh, there were some really good positive signs there. Probably had four or five drops. Um, uh, probably should have finished 22 or 23 of whatever that was, 35, and probably closer to 275 than it was to 225. But that's neither here nor there. Um, we did have our chances still to, to get back into the game. We needed a – right before half, we needed to score a touchdown and not the field goal. And uh, and then we needed a – they had the one – you know, they scored 24 points off of turnovers. And uh, so defense essentially give up 11 – 11 points, and I, I, you know, I think it's always important to have context with all of it. You know, how did it, how did they get to 35? It does matter. And uh, but we gave up the one touchdown drive just before the half that was really kind of a killer. We, we got them to fourth down. It was a, like a 12 play drive. We got them to fourth down. Uh, they had a hard count. We, we jumped off sides and gave them a freebie, and then so they get an automatic first down. Don't get incomplete on the pass, and and then the very next play they run a, a motion post wheel and uh, scored a touchdown and and uh, so those were play okay where we're in the game all right disaster happened how can you how can you fight your way out of it I think and again everything wasn't defined then going into half but it was just gonna be hard and uh, but we, we scored the touchdown we, we we you know maybe force a punt or hold them to a field goal you know things could potentially change but you still say let's start completely over you know it's not zero zero let's just go let's go be us and uh, we came out and had a touchdown drive uh, right out the gate, you know, on offense, eight play, 90 play drive, and you know, over three minutes. And and, and again, the second half overall defensively was outstanding. I think they they had 30 30 yards of offense. And uh, and again, we we had an eight play, 10 play, and a 12 play drive in the second half in a drive where you, you know, you only had six total possessions, and three of them were. Uh, really good drives, only one touchdown drive. And, and so I, I shouldn't call them really good drives. They're really good drives when you score. Uh, but we, we're more efficient and we're a little better, uh, incrementally better. And, uh, but we did turn it over on downs on the 10-play drive. And, and then we came right back and we have a, a good play and, and then we fumble, you know, check it down uh, to the back in the flat. And he has a nice little run and on the way down they, they pop the ball loose. And I, I, that, that was a really sloppy, bad part of the day, top to bottom. Six, they four, six fumbles, super aggressive, you know, the very good defense, super aggressive. They just peppered the, uh, the, the ball all day, and we did a poor job. You know, uh, 
once Jackson came in, you know, he didn't have any turnovers, but he did put the ball on the ground. And again, another time, just poor protection, you know, just really bad pass pro, nine sacks. Uh, not every single one of them's on the O line, but you know, uh, most of them are. And uh, and again, and then we we we, we turn the ball over on uh, on the fumble there at the three play drive, and and then they kick a defense does a good job of of holding them just a couple yards there, and, and then they kick the field goal, and then we come back on the twelve play drive, and again uh, we had the play on the sideline on fourth and sixteen, I believe it was. I sure thought he was. And we just can't get a break. Texas gets the break, and we played them. And they, they say that that was a catch, you know, uh, in the first half against us. And we just couldn't. And, again, like I said, I'm not – nobody feeling bad for us. You just – you create your own breaks by playing better. And uh, and so – or that was third and 16. Uh, and, and then so it was fourth and 16. And then we had the uh, – we turned it over on downs there. So there's – again, there's nothing to, to hang your hat on, uh, quote, unquote, you know, out of, out of that – you know, just a really, um, you know, bad offensive day, top to bottom. When it when it's all said and done, you know, four turnovers, th three touchdowns, 24 points off a of, off of turnovers, uh, and but the defense did. And I, again, every you know, there's guys you know, again in the second half. We we outplayed them in the second half, but it's not hanging your hat on it. You know, you outscored them. You you move the ball better. And we we played really good on defense and. They, had, they just ran their offense. They didn't – That they felt, listen, this defense, Oklahoma's defense, can force some turnovers. Uh, we can't just hand it off. You know, that offense is starting to get rolling. You know, they're doing some things that uh, – where they're showing some life. So we, we've got to play, you know, run our, our game plan. And um, – but anyway, it's just – Really disappointed. Um, I, you know, I just feel sick. Uh, I'm the leader. Everything um, starts and ends uh, with me. And uh, you know, and I know how hard these players have worked, what they've invested. And that doesn't maybe satisfy anybody on the outside, but when you're right there with them, arm in arm, step in step, day in, day out, week in, week out, for months on ends with several guys for years and you know what they stand for you know the strain you know how much they uh, they've put into it and they don't have success it man you hurt you hurt deeply for them and you certainly hurt deeply for your staff uh and their families you know that's real <laughs> i'm not gonna you know i'm you know i'm a people person I mean, i love people and uh and I know what it's like, you know, when my daughter calls me one day, she's crying. She, and I'm, this is not pity. This is kind of, it's really kind of funny. Uh, my daughter, Lainey, she's, she's tough. I mean, she's tough. She calls me. She says, Dad, she says, Dad, it's, she can't have fo phones at school. So I don't know how she got her phone. Uh, but she told somebody at the office it was an emergency. She goes, can I? She, well, I get in trouble if I punch a boy in the face. <laughs> <laughs> she said, well, I get in trouble if I punch a boy in the face. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, my girl. <laughs> no. No. Um, so, you know, so I had to be dad, yeah. and and, um, and uh, so kind of give her the quick talk and get your butt back in class, and and uh, and and other kids, you know, like I said, nobody's filming that. Well, you get paid that. That man, I, you, I do this for free. Okay, and you know, but that's just what it is. There's ignorance no matter what, and there's and there's plenty of great things and goodness. There's a lot more goodness than there is ignorance. But sometimes ignorance is loud, and it gets hurtful for your kids and stuff like that, or your families. And again, we're good. I'm not complaining in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but you know, I'm just telling you how much. And then I, and I hurt for I hurt for the fans. You know, this is. You know, uh, y'all deserve better. And, you know, I'm not going to sit here and act like, oh, well, you know, uh, get in line. I mean, I, I really do. I want people to have joy. You get joy by watching your Sooners play, compete, have a real chance to win, and, and be successful. You know, not just kind of be in the game. That's not the expectation. And, uh, you know, to win. And, and so, you know, you, I'm disappointed, uh, you know, uh, that we're not able to do that. And, uh but that being said, man, this is a program that's been built on toughness. This is a program that punches back, that fights back, um, that you know, that overcomes. And and so we've, you know, here we are. We got a we got a new opportunity. And and I really look at it that I, 
Uh, you, 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 you live, you die, you get scarred up, you go through it, you try to get better. How do we get better? You know, good teams, good players, good coaches, good units, good segments. From the beginning of the year to the end, you know, you, you should have a, a reasonable expectation that there's some improvement. Sometimes it's really noticeable, and there are several players that you could probably pick out right now. Like, I've seen him get better. Oh, he got better. You know, you know not a long list, but there's, there's a list. And, and then all those things that I just said, you, there's a reasonable expectation that they should improve from the beginning of the year to the end, even if it's really incremental and, and not as fast as you want it to have happen. And so that's the challenge for all of us. Uh, and, and so, the, man, I, I, I love our players. We got a bunch of great leaders. Um, again, that doesn't do a whole lot for a lot of people, but it does for me. Uh, it just gives me confidence and, and belief and, and to, you know, taking the next step and the next uh, uh, day, go at it with all you got and, uh, and invest in this week and put together a great game plan, have a great week of work and, and go on the road, go to uh, Oxford and have a chance to win against a really good football team and and I believe that when you if we when we put it all together that we we do have a reasonable expectation to there's not a game that we can't win but we got to play much better we got to take care of the ball we 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 have to win the uh, in, in special teams and the hidden yardage and and we got to play you know great on defense and we got to force turnovers and we've been a really opportunistic defense and we've shown that we were one of the best teams in the top three in the country. When we force a turnover, we score. That's who we've been. We have a body of work over the last two, two and a half years that we've done that. And uh, we got to get back to creating more turnovers as well. Take a break. This segment brought to you by Dos Equis, the official import beer of OU Athletics. Go for Dos. Enjoy Dos Equis responsibly. Back with more with Coach Venables next. Sooner Sports Talk is brought to you by... Norman Hyundai, your premier Hyundai dealership for new and used cars. The best place to gear up for game day is shop.soonersports.com. The Sooner Sports Podcast is your all-access audio pass to Sooner Sports. Listen as Toby Rowland and Chris Plank talk all things Sooners. New episodes drop every day. Log on to Soonersports.com slash podcast or search Sooner Sports Podcast in your favorite podcast provider. Presented by Allstate and Riverwind Casino. Orthodontics exclusively is a proud sponsor of the junior captain of the game. Junior captain is the ultimate fan experience for children 6 to 12. Sooners and the Rebels of Old Miss coming up Saturday morning, 11 a.m. down in Oxford. This segment brought to you by the Riverwind Casino. Good times, great rewards. Uh, one quick question, then I'll hand it back to Teddy. But um, will it be Jackson at quarterback Saturday, or, or are we going to have a competition this week in practice? Or yeah, do no. you know? yeah it'll, be, it'll be Jackson. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Ole Miss, dangerous football team, good offensively, uh, really good on the defensive side. What yeah. have you seen from them? Yeah, just um, – Rinse and repeat uh, <laughs> this year's <laughs> schedule. Uh, and I, I, again, I, I like we're playing a really good team. Um, it's a veteran team. I think 21 of their 22 guys are uh, seniors. They've, uh, they're, they're all portal guys. Um, uh, they're, really good, they're a really good team. You know, they're, I think they're 5-2. And, two, and uh, they lost a heartbreaker to LSU just before the – they had a bye last week getting ready for us, and then they, they lost to Kentucky um, at home several weeks ago. And, uh, but uh, they, they do a really good job. It's Y'all are familiar with um, what we did on offense, and it's very similar to what we did with Coach Levy here and um, with some new, you know, uh, wrinkles and things of that nature. Uh, but you got Jackson Dart that – uh, he's one of the best quarterbacks in in all of college football. Now they got they're really deep at receiver. They got big tight ends. They got really good running backs. They got a big strong veteran offensive line, and uh, he's a runner. And uh, he, he he's uh, also a surgeon at throwing the ball. And then on defense, they, you know uh, something that's as just somebody that likes to watch other programs and coaches and things of that nature. But where 
Ole Miss was maybe four years ago on defense to where they're at now. They're really transformed, and they've gotten better players, you know, some of that through the portal and whatnot. But uh, Pete Golden came over from Alabama two years ago and has rebuilt that defense and uh, done a really nice job. And at uh, all three levels, uh, they've got really uh, good players. They're super aggressive. They've, they've got disruptive front. Uh, Walter Nolan, uh, uh, and they've got a bunch of good guys, but it's kind of led by a guy named Walter Nolan, who was the number one player in the country uh, a few years back. And he went to A&M, played as a true freshman, and then he got in the portal, I believe, after his first year. Might have been a second year. So forgive me if I have that uh, that that wrong. But um, he's playing really well uh, for them, uh, super disruptive. But everybody up front, I just – I don't even look at, you know, the names much anymore. They're just – it's all kind of the same. And um, – and then they're, you know, they've been, you know, solid in their their kicking game as well. So, uh, first time for the Sooners to go to to Oxford, um, uh, or for me to go, you know, with uh, with them to go to Oxford. We played Ole Miss in '99 in that in the we were talking about that before the before the show in the Independence Bowl uh, in Shreveport, Louisiana. And uh, but it's going to be really exciting. It's going to be a great atmosphere. Um, it's going to be an early kick. Uh, we got to get on a bus and drive over an hour early, so it's going to be an early morning. Uh, last time we did that, that I remember was BYU, right? Yeah, early, that's right. Early. I was going to say no, Nebraska, early, but early. you're right. Yeah, early, BYU early. was earlier. So this would be early, early, but grab a biscuit and go play. <laughs> and uh, but our guys are excited. They they recognize we've uh, we've looked at them over the last several months, and uh, you know knowing that this date would come, and uh, our players worked. A little bit against them, you know, over the course of the summer as well, just to get familiar, because what some of the stuff that they do is just different, and uh, from what some other people do. So, uh, but but going to be a great challenge, and and uh, but again, we're looking forward to it. One of the nice stories from Saturday was uh, Jacob Jordan coming in. Yeah. We all went scrambling for the roster to try to figure out who 88 was when he ran yeah. out on the field. Well, he played his butt off out there for you. He Tell did. us the story of this kid. Well, it's just it's cool because I. And I Pointed it out today to the team. I think he might have got the 12th man award. Didn't have no, a whole bunch of awards uh, on offense, but we did hand uh, the 12th man award out and just played outstanding, had six catches, and he did exactly, you know, the, the, the message was he didn't do anything. He took everything he's done in practice, alignment, deep route detail, um, some of the run game uh, responsibilities, finding the open grass when things break down that you know we, there's a there's a certain protocol and like right on this play he he works and does a really nice job of tippy toeing there on the sideline and he made some things happen a couple runs after the catch as well and uh, but two two summers ago he came to camp we're doing the one-on-ones and uh, early in camp everybody wanted to cover him you know because everybody's trying to you know and he's not real big and and uh, so uh, after he eviscerated a couple of uh, <laughs> defensive backs and humiliated, uh, <laughs> humiliated him. next thing you know, every time he got up, them DBs. Over time, their they, shoes. They're like, oh, yeah, they, get something to they drink. know we want to go out and cover him. So I'm <laughs> like having to, I'm finding a guy, no, you go cover him, you know. And I want to see, I want to see you guys matched up. <laughs> and sure enough, man, he was killing everybody. So, man, I'm loving on him. And I said, you can play here. Uh, 100% what you do. He's really good. He's super explosive. knows knows how to run routes. How to how to all of his stem, all of the the little nuances and the techniques on how do I get open, and he knows how. And he's got really good speed, uh, but he's got great lateral explosiveness and quickness and just a great burst. And uh, and he's got fantastic hands. In the in came in the in the spring and. Uh, he walked on his preferred walk on and uh, from South Lake Carroll uh, there in Dallas and in the spring and this just what you expect two freshmen just got here he lacked confidence had a little bit of doubt didn't have all the details and so we'd rather be in the back of the line instead of the front and uh, and it was a little uneven at catching the ball you know which is something he really does well but just wasn't catching you know, just uneven and uh, and even during early in this season you know we try to kind of bring him along and compete with guys and try to get guys better and he just kind of stayed right there just didn't ever got there and and then in the last few weeks started just kind of taking off and I can do this and and sure enough uh, they gave him a chance and uh, they all better be 
be careful, man. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> and he had just man, he was beaming, and the players, and as you know how it works in the in the meetings today, man, they were so fired up for him. I forget what they call him. What they, they call him? Frost, Frosty, <laughs> and uh, I called him Goldilocks, and. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, but that's cool. It was really good. Just a great reminder, you know, you know, it doesn't matter how you start matters, how you, you just keep, you keep your head down. You're not getting the results that you want. You just keep your head down. You keep working, you keep improving, stay humble, uh, show up, be ready to compete. Um, when you get in the game, you be ready to play and, and boy, was he, and just a great example. He hadn't asked for nothing, came here for free, uh, would eat off the floor. You know, to have his opportunity, and and that wasn't an aberration. You'll see. He, and I mean, I think it was pretty apparent for everybody. You know, he's going to have a, a really good career when it's all said and done. So really cool stuff. Good story. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see what he does down in Oxford. We'll take a break. One more segment with Coach when we come back. We want to thank all of our Sooner Radio Network affiliates across the state and region. Fans can check out Soonersports.com for an affiliate in your area. And if you're traveling outside the state of Oklahoma, you can listen to all the action on either Sirius XM Radio or download the Varsity Network app and listen free. OU's 2024 football games are available on Exodus 96.5 FM in Oklahoma City and 101.5 FM El Patron in Tulsa, as well as on those stations' websites. Each OU Spanish broadcast will feature a 30-minute pregame show and a 15-minute postgame show. Oklahoma Buick GMC dealers. See your Oklahoma Buick GMC dealer. All right, welcome back, everybody. Final segment for us with Coach Venables brought to you by Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue. This segment also brought to you by Pike Pass. Make it home safe. Oklahoma. We got the injury report and everything coming out on Wednesday, so feel free to punt to that. Is there any hope about Dion and Andrell and Jaden or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll just punt. Every time I, I say something, <laughs> I can't say the right thing, yeah. and I'm not trying to be evasive. That's fine. Uh, you I'm can not, punt. I'm not a doctor, and I just repeat what I've been told, and I guess that's not good for too many people. <laughs> you know, I got no damage in. I want everybody back now, yesterday. Yeah. So, okay, but yeah. they're not back yesterday yet. Yeah, but I I do expect a couple guys to be back for sure. Uh, these guys aren't like holding out and you know wanting to go somewhere else, and uh, they're not. And you know they they love Oklahoma. Uh, they want to get on the field. You know, Andrews had to have he had, had ACL. Yeah, it's hard to get come back from an ACL. It's usually one year till you get back from the end, date of injury till you get back to what you were. If you have no collateral issues, no collateral damage, your confidence, your explosiveness, your strength. Um, and so if you have any issues, and he's just a guy that scars. And so he's had to have a couple of cleanup jobs just to take away some of the discomforts. Real, it's like very painful. And, uh, uh, but, you know, he has every intention to, you know, come back uh, next year. And, uh, and possibly even play some, you know, this year because, you know, you, you hadn't played at all. So you can play and, uh, you know, play up to four games and then the bowl game doesn't count. Uh, so uh, Jaleel will be back in a few weeks. Um, he's right on schedule. Uh, and um, and Dion will be a day to day here this week. And then, and then Nick is a, again, he's just had a real, he's had a, it's been snake bit with, uh, you know, a, a thigh. Uh, thigh injury and it's kind of in the upper thigh and the hip and it's a real tear that MRI everything <laughs> MRIs tell you exactly what it is you put that dye in there and he's got a significant you know tear um, that was close to having to have a, a surgery on it but it just takes you, you go there and Google uh, you know thigh tear uh, you know to second degree or third degree it's gonna say you need to chill, you know, up to three months. So those are just really tough, you know, unfortunate uh, injuries. But they're at every practice. Man, they brought so much juice and energy. Jaden Gibson, of course, he, you know, he just fell on the ground. He's he, they're playing, doing a one-on-one -on -one drill in in practice. Um, you know, he he and the defensive back and Jaden's go out for a pass and he he's coming down, and catches the ball, and he just lands really hard on the ground. Uh, 
and it tore his patella tendon, you know, which is like a, kind of like an ACL, one of those a year or maybe a little less than, but like takes a whole year, you know, to kind of get back and just kind of some dumb luck, you know, that way. And, uh, but um, we're hopeful we'll get a couple of those guys back and then, you know, potentially even all of them back, you know, for next year. That's kind of the, what they've um, expressed to me. And you know, without me, I mean, they've come to me. I haven't gone to them. They, they came to me and said, man, we, we're excited to be back. And they were, they were hurting, you know, that they can't be out. They want to play. You I mean, you work your whole life. Your dreams are to play the game. And they, they like to practice. Guys that are good at football, they like to go to practice. You know, you want to go and you want to you compete. And you know the value, you know, the cumulative effect and the value of practicing. Although you stack all these days, man, they all have dreams to play in the NFL one day too. And they know – they're, they've got to, you know, go to practice and get better, and that's how you, you know, they want to be the best in the country. Been a tough couple of days. We appreciate you spending yeah, some time answering our questions. You guys today. bring out the bring out the best in me. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's very therapeutic. Uh, therapeutic. That's why yeah, they pay us I'm the trying. medium bucks. Thank you, <laughs> Coach. Good luck against Ole Miss. We'll be back to wrap it up next. To our Cornerstone Television partners, OU Health, OGMD. Fowler Auto Group and Coca-Cola. Final segment brought to you by your Oklahoma Buick GMC dealers. Uh, that was an interesting hour. A lot of information there that uh, we'll dissect in coming days. Anything jump out at you from what Coach had to say tonight? I'm glad his daughter didn't punch the boy in the face, right? <laughs> that was that was pretty good. No, um, no, I, I thought it was I thought it was uh, well said. It's not easy for anyone. It's definitely not easy as a head coach. Um, uh, I, you know, we'll we'll see what happens in the future. You know, had to make the move. Um, he's confident in the guys that he's appointed in those those new spots. We'll see what happens. Bold prediction for OU Ole Miss. What do you got? I'm going to say the University of Oklahoma is the first to score a touchdown in the football game. Oh, you scores the first touchdown. Boy, that would make my heart happy. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Especially after the way last week started. It <laughs> no would be kidding. great if we could do that. Well, we'll be down there with you uh, for an 8 o'clock a.m. start on the Sooner Radio pregame show live from Oxford on Saturday morning. Kickoff will be just after 11 a.m. Our first ever trip to Vought Hemingway Stadium right next to the Grove down there should be fun and we'll see you next week right here at Rudy's Boomer Sooner everybody Sooner Sports Talk has been brought to you by Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue bringing you the best in real Texas barbecue and by Bud Light easy to drink easy to enjoy the preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Sooner Sports Network.